he's rightfully, in my view, come under fire for this bizarre, troubling exchange with this little boy that happened in India, where he was on a receiving line of sorts. People were coming up to him. And forgive me, we're going to show this video again. I find it really disturbing, but you ha it has to be mm. seen to, be, to be believed. Um, and the boy comes up to him just to tell the, the audience what they're going to see. And um, they, I'll just read it so I don't get it wrong. The child um, asks if he can hug him. And the Dalai Lama says, first here, and asks for a kiss on his, um, I guess, I don't know where the first kiss is. And then he says, right here also. Oh, the first one's on his cheek. Then he points to his lips and says, now here. And he puckers up and the boy leans in. People are kind of laughing. There's some small applause. And then you see the Dal Dalai Lama staring at the boy. And then he says to the boy, then suck my tongue. And he sticks his tongue out. And the boy kind of goes backwards. There's a bit of laughter. And the boy and the Dalai Lama, Lama leave it, lean into one another. The Dalai Lama's tongue is out. And they come close. And the boy kind of gets out of, out of the way. So this is what we're going to see. I'll show it to you. And then we'll talk about it. Yeah. Who's here? <laughs> <laughs> then I think finally here also. <laughs> and sir, my tongue. <laughs> mm. What do you make of it? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, you know, honestly, I'm not quite sure what to make of it. I mean, I, I agree. It's completely bizarre and, you know, unacceptable on its face. Um, what I, I, I have a hard time seeing it as a, you know, a frank expression of uh, you know, sexual interest in a child, largely because he's doing this in front of thousands of people, right? The, the idea that you're going to be, you know, practice your pedophilia uh, in front of thousands of people, you know, on camera and get away with it seems, you know, patently insane. So, you know, I, I don't know what to make, like had this happened in private, that would be more disturbing on some level because it's like, okay, then then it's really in, inappropriate overture toward a child but you know for this I, I honestly don't know what to say about it i mean it's 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 some combination of a you know weird tibetan joke or a you know a symptom of brain damage on the part of uh, the dalai lama like a, you know he's an 87 year old man you know i don't know i don't know what's happening there i, mean, I haven't I haven't seen him for 30 years i can tell you 30 years ago he was an extraordinary an extraordinarily inspiring person, right? And so, and so, I have no idea what's going on there. And it's I completely understand the reaction to it. And it's very, it's you know, it's truly unfortunate that a moment like that can, you know, become indelible and and really be the uh, really damage the the legacy of someone who I consider to to have been a, just an extraordinarily wise and compassionate person. Insofar as I. And, you know, fit to judge, you know, what he's, what kind of person he's been, been like all these years from mm. the outside. So it's, well, good, you know, good it's, it's awful, it's awful and strange. So. Right. Because we never know. We never know. We've, uh, we've seen a lot of heroes fall when the truth about them comes out. You know, Jerry Sandusky and the whole thing at Penn State. I, you know, it's just, a lot of people looked up to him, believed he loved, you know, kids. And then, then we were told a very different story. The thing about the Dalai Lama though I'm. I understand your point. It would. It would, in some ways, be worse if he did it behind closed doors, because then you'd really have to say, "Where's this going?" And you knew that that exchange, in that moment at least, was going nowhere. However, I think the it's the I attribute his willingness to do it in the open to his age. I don't think a normal mm. person uh, who doesn't have pedophilic instincts would ever ask for that or do that in any setting. I think perhaps a screen got got dropped uh, because he's getting old and forgot how grossly inappropriate people would see that. That's that's not something any normal aged person does. Not one. I've known tons of them. Um, nobody does that. You don't do that unless you have that instinct. And that's why I really think this is a before and after moment for him. I actually would be vigilant about keeping him away from children from this point forward. I understand once you're the Dalai Lama, you're the Dalai Lama to death. 
Um, but this guy shouldn't be anywhere near children. You should, certainly shouldn't be uh, parading him in front of them because I believe that boy was essentially abused right there. I, I think that experience has the real threat of staying with that child forevermore as an abuse moment. And we all witnessed it. You know, the, the whole world has seen it now. It troubles me, Sam, and it troubles me when you didn't, but mm. it troubles me when people defend it, as we saw a guy from Rolling Stone do on CNN yesterday, because there really needs to be a hard stop on anything like that from everyone in polite society when it comes to anything that might even open the door a little bit to the exploitation of kids. Yeah, I agree. I mean, again, I, I don't know really, I don't know how to interpret uh, what was happening there again. And I don't know if there's anything in Tibetan culture that, that I'm unaware of that would have made some sense of it. I mean, I, you know, I know we looked into that. Stick, we looked into it. They sticking, said sticking yeah. out your tongue is, is frequent, but not. That, that's the thing. Yeah. I mean, that, so that, but you know, I, you know, it, it's just, it's such a total miscalibration of, of, um, the effect it was going to have on the, you know, the, his audience and the rest of the world that I just, I don't know what to attribute it to on, on his side. Again, he's, mm -hmm. he's an 87 year old man. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, your interpretation could be correct, but I just, there's, there's no way to know. I mean, there's no way either to investigate, right? Like that, that's what I would love to see. Let's do an investigation, see if there's anybody where there's smoke, there's fire. And there's other there little boys out there who have a story to tell or now grown boys. Um, that's what should happen, but I don't think there's going to be an appetite for that because he's so revered, you know, he's so revered and has for so many years been held up as this holy leader and this wise man. It's like, well, sometimes our, our heroes fall sometimes behind closed doors. They do absolutely reprehensible things and you have to be open-minded to it when it's staring you in the face. Dogs are massive parts of our lives, right? They're our family members. They deserve to be treated appropriately. So it is important to prioritize their safety and well-being. One of the easiest ways to do this is by giving your dogs a safe and secure space just for them, like we do with Strudwick and Thunder. They sleep in their crates every night. They love it. They want to go in there. It feels like their little den. And I also know that they're safe. They're not going to get into any food that's bad for them, etc. Let me introduce you to the collapsible dog crate by the American-made company Impact Dog Crates. That's the number one dog crate for protecting your dog in your home. Built from heavy-duty aluminum, this travel-friendly dog crate, crate can be set up in less than 60 seconds, and it folds down to just eight inches tall. That makes it easy for travel purposes or if you want to hide it. I know what you're thinking, but a dog crate will be such an eyesore in, your, in my home. Not necessarily, and not this dog crate. Not only does the Impact Collapsible Dog Crate come in five sizes, one of which can even fit a Great Dane, but you can choose from six vibrant colors to match your home interior. Almost nobody else has that. I haven't seen that anywhere else. Thanks to Impact Dog Crates, keeping your dog and your home safe is easier than ever. If you want to provide a safe space for your dog, head on over to impactdogcrates.com and use the code MK for 15% off your crate. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.